Hello there, everyone. Welcome back to some more Let's Play Underrail. I remember what we did in the last episode, because I recorded it only like about five hours ago. <laughs> we explored the remaining rooms, or almost all of them, so I think at least one's left with Minecracker in it, down in the upper caves, I believe is where it was. Finishing up the crawlers and deathstalker infested chambers down there. We also began exploring Upper Underrail, and in this episode, we're going to continue to do so, and probably stop by the Institute of Chort and figure out what we need to do to enter it. Off screen, I've done a bunch of selling to the merchants, not using the cheat engine, just waiting for the merchants to refresh their inventory while I do other things around the house and so on, and take some naps, because I'm an old man now, <laughs> who's been going through chemotherapy for his cancer, and uh, it's... Uh, it's exhausting sometimes. I really needed it. Oh my goodness. And we spent a bunch of money. I spent half the cash I had. I had 14,000 bucks and now I'm down to seven because I really wanted to renovate the upper floor of the house and put security systems up in it and here in Underrail. So uh, we shouldn't have done that or I shouldn't have done that because we should be saving for Super Steel. But whatever, I, I, I wanted to do it and so I've done it. The good news is, we're going to be killing a bunch of lunatics very soon and getting their crossbows and selling them. And the same thing with any other weaponry that they possess. So we should go back up to about 12,000 by the time we are done with the entry into the Institute of Chort. Let alone the Institute itself, which will provide us with some funds necessary, assuming that we don't decide to just slaughter everyone inside the facility. Which is not my plan. We're, we're going to be doing the Chort's quests this time around. Why I would like to do so. In any case, we're going to skip the summary because we haven't leveled now for a few videos. Let's eat some food and explore more under ale. Got some under pie. Oh, and I have begun the process of upgrading some of those old world weapons. I am trying to get all the bits so I can see what they look like completely refurbished. The ZC-99 is currently being woke, uh, woke? Is currently being woked on in uh, Rail Crossing at the moment. I figured it'd be fun to have a complete set of upgraded weaponry. Oh, hello. One second, what is this? This is new. This looks like a br this broken fence here is new. This must be a random dungeon that spawned up here in Upper Underrail. We'll come back for that. Actually, we'll we'll poke at it in a few seconds. I see the glowing flicker of a flame here, which means we have bandits around the corner. Hello? Bandits, guess what? You're all on fire. We're gonna kill your... Actually, we can move back and throw another grenade. Wow! Is that all of them? <laughs> oh! That was good. MK3 HE grenade for the win there. Let's loot all the all the corpses. And then immediately begin breaking down stuff on the screen. Uh, <laughs> I feel so guilty doing this so often, viewer. You don't understand. But on that same note, I am going to do it. So let's see. I could definitely use more money. Now that I've s splurged on the house a bit more. And we need a bunch of repair kits and what have you, too. So we definitely want to break down all the bits. All the leather armor. Oh, that poor group. You know, something I've always felt a little guilty... It, it, I shouldn't. It's just a video game. No one cares. But walking into a group of bandits like this, who, you know, they're just waiting around for their soup to get done. And some guy rounds the corner and just sets them all on fire and it takes all their stuff. Like, are we the hero? Are we the hero? <laughs> <laughs> we must be the hero. This is all a bunch of low-level stuff, too. Oh, man, poor guys. 
Now, they didn't want to be killed. Their names shouldn't have been in, gr in gray. All right, hold on. So, a heads up that I do not know where the heavy duty starts. The heavy duty DLC. It looks like it should start somewhere in Upper Underrail. I am nervous this starts it. I don't want to do any either of the DLCs, not really commit to them, until after we're done destroying Chort this time around. So, I will peek into that fence after we're done exploring the rest of Upper Underrail. But I don't... In act or, well, you know... Okay, hold on. We're here. So let's let's see where this goes. Maybe I'm incorrect and just really absent-minded and it goes around the corner here. I don't think it does though. Okay, that's got to be the DLC stuff. A gunslinger and buck nimble. Okay, so we'll come back for this much later. One second. Let's, oh my goodness. Okay. I don't care about the empty soda can. I can go on the floor at the moment. This comes on. The keyboard goes on my lap. All right. This is better. All right. So, we found the DLC. It is starting, I think, here at Upper Under Rail. I will come back for that later. Let's clear out whatever's waiting behind the door down here, which I think is either Iron Heads or Lunatics. can walk right past the protectorate. They have no clue. We wiped out what we did. So, viewer, I'm not sure what to do when it comes to leveling up next for feats and what have you. I've got everything I think I need. The rest of the stuff would just be fun stuff. I was thinking of potentially taking another crafting upgrade that would give me more psionic points for headbands that I craft, for example. Or I could take something like future... It's not future orientation, but there's a feat which allows to contraction and dilation to last one more turn. If I am going to use contraction in the future, it would be very nice for it to last one more turn on me when I, use, when I utilize it. I haven't made up my mind, though, if I want to actually use contraction. I've been doing very well without it, but it did save our life in Fort App, uh, Epony, oh, sorry, the Epony Lab, so, hello, bandit, oh, that was a door trick by accident, okay, he's wearing a leather armor that is resistant to fire, so we'll use some distortion on him, just one, I want to get his attention, that looks like a bomber to me. Even though he's not an iron head. Oh, hello! Well, now we will throw a fireball down. We good. We hurt the metal armor wielding guy. Recurrence him. We hit him for 154, so I want recurrence to do even more damage. Missed. Oh, this guy's got some decent armor on, huh? Or good hit points. Five millimeter. All right, we don't have to worry about him at all then, as long as we're close to him. Let's get his friend instead. Yeah, that's a five millimeter. We, we can even turn off our shield. This in a bit, but it's okay. I don't think it'll penetrate our armor. It does. Never mind. Oh, God. Should have... Okay. Well, oh, it doesn't matter. <laughs> right. We're immune to heat damage, sir. You need to do better than that. Is that it? I think that's it.
feels like there should be more than just three dudes here. There isn't. And we're immediately completely overburdened. Alright, so this means we need to recycle some stuff. So we don't need the sledgehammer. The assault rifle can be broken down for 73 bits. Very nice. Let's grab some boots. Let's grab this pistol. Okay, we can hold on to everything else and repair it over time. Let's wear this belt. Quickly go and leave this stuff down by... Actually, we should make repair kits. This is what we took all these different options for. All the crafting upgrades and what have you. Make a bunch of this stuff. All right, so. Repair the heavy armor. Uh, boots might be worth something. They're not. That was, a, that was a waste, whatever. We can afford to waste a, a single heavy repair kit. I'm going to waste a few more of these and repair these helmets. And we should leave garbage in these lockers, which I completely forgot to search. So let's go ahead and search them really quick. Bullets. Taurus guide. So no matter what, it just occurs to me, you'd be killing these guys anyway on Oddy mode. Because you want the oddities, which are hidden behind the lockers and what have you, that they're standing in front of. In classic mode, we don't need to kill these guys. In Oddy mode, you're going to want those Oddy points. So, gotta, gotta kill them to see what's behind them. That can be repaired. Vagabond for the oddy item. All right, and this could use a big repair. Okay, and what do we have that's junk that we don't need on us? Cardboard, we don't care about any of that. We do want to make another repair kit. For fabric, we'll repair the overcoat. And we're not collecting small health kits anymore. We don't really need those. We don't want any MK2 grenades. We don't need any flashbangs. All right, that was a piece of cake. We can also mark, well not mark, but we can clear that note. Drop this stuff off. And then we will go to the into the chort next. There's still more rooms to explore, more guys to kill and loot to take. But we should get some main questing started. And there's a lot of conversation to occur outside the Institute. And I'd like to start that. So we will get that done in another few minutes. What can we talk about, viewer? So, I've been spending, as you may know, lots of time at the hospital. Uh, when I first started this playlist, I mentioned that I wasn't sure exactly how much time I would be at the hospital and how many issues... It would be dependent upon if chemotherapy and how many issues I would have during it. And it's been okay for most of the time. No, that, no I'm sorry, that's, that's not true. That's not true. <laughs> Which is a bad way to, uh, that's bad when I, say so, when I say it like that. About half the time has been okay. I'm at the hospital for about six days a month receiving the chemo drug. But, unfortunately, I'm also at the hospital for another week, often, because of issues in between drugs my body has neutropenic fevers is what they're, is what they're called what that means is that um i am neutropenic 
And what that means is that my body does not is not producing certain types of cells it needs to fight infections because the chemotherapy drugs are eliminating them, which is what you want to have happen. That's you you want the drugs to do to do that sort of thing. Unfortunately, it means that if I do have something like a neutropenic fever, which is a very low grade fever, I got to go into the hospital. Because if I'm fighting an infection, which I was last month, for example, a blood infection, I can die. So I gotta go in and receive antibiotics and be monitored and stuff of that sort. Which is annoying because it cuts into the free time to record video games. But it's more important that I live. <laughs> well, you guys don't get any more uh, under rail, as it were, right? So uh, it's a bit frustrating in that regard. I recently, as I was, I, th I think I mentioned, I somehow managed to pull out of my arm my pick line catheter over the this happened a few days ago on Sunday a pick line just in case I did not mention it but I think I did a pick line is basically like an IV if, if you guys don't know what an IV is it was, uh, when they give you fluid at the hospital from drip bags they will have an IV in your arm. They can, this goes not too far into your veins, maybe a few inches or centimeters, maybe like two inches into your, into your vein or three, maybe tops. And uh, maybe like, maybe it's like, I don't know, eight, nine centimeters, something like that. Maybe a little more. A pick line is a rather long catheter that is fed into one of your larger veins. Mine was 45 centimeters, and it goes, or what is that in inches for us Americans? About a foot and a half, maybe? It gets fed into one of your upper arms, it gets fed up around your shoulder and towards your heart. Normally, <laughs> this stays, it's supposed to stay in your uh, in your arm and it can be used to both take blood out of your arm and put stuff in it consists of also of two tubes going into the catheter and it's very handy uh, I really like the pick lines because I don't have to have needles put in to draw blood they can do it directly from the pick line Blood also doesn't scare me, doesn't frighten me, I don't feel queasy looking at blood, blood's perfectly fine. I've had lots of blood issues in my life, so it's, uh, it, you know, whatever, it's just, it's just something I deal with. Well, waking up on Sunday and pulling out 36 centimeters of that catheter somehow, I have no clue how I managed it. I toss and turn a bit in bed. And so the only thing I can think of is that because of how I wrapped around the tubing that goes into the arm, I must have turned or twisted and pulled that much that much out of my arm. That was not good. So the rest of it had to come out the other day. I'm mentioning this because it's just an example of how unlucky I am when it comes to things that are done to me. A few days ago, I managed to... Something is happening with my uh, fingernails. They are very... Uh, paperish, we'll go with? The tips of them. They fray, and they cut very easily. It's like I can peel them off of me now. I think that's the chemo drug doing something to them. Um, and they look a bit weird to me. The cuticles look bad to me on them. In any case, I managed to cut myself a few times now with my fingernails without even realizing it. I don't feel the cuts. And because of the chemo drugs, the last thing that I tend to recover are something called platelets. These are what give you some of your clotting ability. And my platelets are effectively at, well, almost zero, or have been. When I go in for infusions every so often, I need platelets in order to stop myself from having horrific bruising and what have you. Oh, hold on one second. Isn't there... There is a... There it is. There's a rift here. I tune herself to the rift. So 
So imagine my horror when I cut myself in a place you don't really want to cut yourself, uh, showering, and I don't realize it. And I sit back down later, only to discover I'm in a pool of blood and extremely dizzy. And there's blood all over my carpets, all over the bathroom, and it's uh, it's not stopping. And it took about an, it took about 45 minutes for me. Uh, I'm sorry, no, it took hours because I didn't realize I was bleeding until I was almost passed out because of how lightheaded I was. Oh my god. And this is not the first time something like this has happened to me. Very frustrating, viewer. <laughs> Very frustrating. All right. That's enough health issues. Let's go ahead and say hello to the Institute of Chort. As the robed man Hurley steps outside, all three soldiers standing in front of him simultaneously take a small bow while having their hands placed on their chests, right around the heart area. Once the salute is finally over, the middle soldier takes a single step forward and addresses him. Chort is evolution, Ephrator. The Ephrator responds by performing an identical salute, excluding the bow. Evolution is Chort, brother. Tell me, did you manage to find anything? I'm afraid not, Ephrator. We scanned this running area, but found nothing other than a handful of isolated groups of bandits and scavengers. And no one possessed what we seek. I'm afraid our initial reports might be just true. Lunatics must have been behind the theft. All leads simply point to those devolved inbreds. I will be the judge of that, brother. His stare passes over each and every one of the three individuals. Rassifors, you all deserve rest. Meanwhile, I will wait for the second unit to arrive. They should be here soon. Magnificent short. I said, go get some rest. Don't just stand there like you're frozen. Inside. He points to the big front gate. Chort, guide you, Ephrator. Yes, Chort, guide me. All right, viewer. Let's go ahead and talk with the folks out here and pick their pockets. Hey there. Hey, commoner. The Ugly Arcs are a bunch of pipe workers. I ain't coming back to Core City. Good for you. But you might want to after I take whatever's in your pockets, because I'm about to loot whatever's you got left on you. 18 coins, thank you. Frowning man. You approach this person and attempt to start a conversation. He responds with a glance, followed by him turning his head away from you. His face seems to be stuck in a perpetual frown, making him look like he's constantly angry. Whether he is or not, you remain unsure. Hey, I have some questions I'd like to ask you. He looks at you, waits a couple of seconds, then decides to respond. I'm not interested in answering any questions. Go bug someone else, Zoner. What can you tell me about yourself? He seems irritated by your question. Will you leave me alone already? Which part of go bug someone else line did you misunderstand? Go, as in get far away from me as possible. Bug, as in annoy, rile, br bother someone else, as in someone that is not me. Get it now? What can you tell me you hear about this place? His round becomes even more pronounced. Death, stupid, or both? I'd say both. Therefore, I have to lower myself to your intellectual level so I may be able to convey the messages I have been trying to convey for some time now. Here it is. I've never I've never had this conversation before. I find it... I, I, I want to annoy this guy. Duh, 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 duh. Shoo. Don't speak to me ever again. Duh, duh, duh. So what do you know about the Chortists? He spits his words through his teeth. What kind of moron on you? Leave me alone, or I'll zone you out on the spot. <laughs> I've never actually had the, I've never actually uh, done the conversation with this guy. Can we get what to talk with this guy? That'd be hilarious if we could. He's a member of Cortec, which doesn't surprise me given his current, given his, given his equipment. Okay, so we'll take his plasma cell off of him then. The filthy and foul-smelling old man gives you a wicked stare akin to a serpent's, but one with a slight mental retardation. Afterwards, he opens his mouth so wide it makes him look like he is just about to vomit. He doesn't, thankfully, but he still holds the expression, saying nothing at any point during his peculiar introduction. Hey, I'm Tim. Who are you? What? 
Let me let me repeat that. Uh, hi, I'm Tim. Who are you? What? Uh, can you understand what I'm saying? What? I uh, give up. Goodbye. What? Okay. Take care. Of what? I really wanted to. I we really want to see if I could have gotten him to talk with the frowning man. <laughs> Armored man. Leave me alone. Get lost, lad. All right. Well, Mr. Protectorate, probably. We're going to pick your pocket and see what group you're a part of. Not the Protectorate, but I am going to take... I'm even going to take your health, Hypo. Foundry worker. It's been a while since I've seen anyone been brought in. My legs hurt. Yeah, it's quite a walk from here. I was thinking how there's probably hours worth of travel time between some of the locations here in Underrail. And because of video game logic, logic's the wrong term to use here. Video game for us playing the game to spare us all that real life walking around time that's similar to like Daggerfall. Uh, it's only a few minutes between, it, even, yeah, like two minutes between locations. But it must be a long walk given that we have rails between these different cities in South, South Under Rail. And they're separated by a lot more than what we see here in the game. Detrius. Always feel really bad for you, Detrius, because of what happens to you at the end of what of uh, the short quest line. But we're going to do this for you. You approach a young man standing next to a barrel full of boiling soup, which doesn't smell nearly as life-threatening as it looks. He wears old, worn-out, but clean clothes that look like they would easily disintegrate should he stand next to a passing train. His physique, on the other hand, is much more solid. Handsome with a burly body covered in clear, uniformly toned skin. That combined with his unusually milky white teeth make it, him look like he was created to simply stand still and look good. His calloused and heavily scarred hands, however, imply the opposite. Hey, need something? Hey, I'm Tim. I have some questions if you have the time. Nice to meet you, Tim. I'm Detrius. I thought that better do anyway. What do you want to ask? Hey, oh, what do you know about the Chortists? Chortists might look like a religious cult, but they're all about science. Now, I'm not a knowledgeable fellow, so a lot of the hardcore science stuff is beyond me, but the core idea is that we're all somehow connected to this short creature. It has similar DNA to us, and it can do some amazing stuff, like regenerate and live forever and adapt to anything, something like that. What's most hardcore is that they, the Chortists, want to use the knowledge gained from Chort to improve us. I mean, allow us to one day go to the surface and survive there. I definitely prefer that to rotten in the sneaky drop zone. Who's that the rail geezer outside? Oh, ignore that stinker. He ain't right in the head. He walks around and scares people with his filthy, gaping mouth. The only thing he ever says is what? Just that and nothing else. He's not violent, or else he would have had his innards splattered over the floor by the Rassifors by now. Rassifors? That's how the Torch's soldiers are called, if I understand it correctly. I'm guessing the word has some hardcore meaning or something, because it sounds really weird to my ears. So, I have had several friends join cults. And it's always interesting when this happens. It's terrifying for me, but it's also fascinating. And cults use different language than normal people use, and they have an outsider group that they point to, too. Rassifors is an example of one such great way in which to delineate how your troops here, your soldiers, are different than normal soldiers, for example. Keeps it in house, as it were. I was, gr I'm great. I think I mentioned this several times whenever we've done Into the Chort. I really like how Stig presented this group in particular. I think they did a fantastic job on the Institute and in making it feel like a cult. And they care about themselves, and and they're and everyone who's a member of their inner group too. I really, really like it. I think he did a fantastic once again a fantastic job here. Just stay out of their way and you're good. So, why are you here and what do you know about this place? This is Into the Chort, the place where Chortists live and do whatever they do. I went to one of their lectures in Core City. It sounded hardcore even though I didn't understand half of it. Any way you look at it, it seems a lot better than the zone. So I came here to try my luck, yeah. Maybe there's a better life waiting for me behind that heavy gate. For more details about Chortists, better ask some of the smarter people around here. I'm sure I'll be able to explain it better than I can. 
Did you perhaps see any torches carrying a strange artifact? It looks like a 20-sided polyhedron. I don't know anything about any polyhedrons and all that hardcore stuff. I'm just a simple zoner who minds his own business. Besides, I spend most of the time here and the view is not the best. Maybe other folks can help you. Hmm. Well, can you tell me about yourself? I'm a simple zoner from Core City who's searching for something better in life. Heard of Drop Zone? I lived there my whole life. Awful place to live in. Awful people. Awful food. If you get your hands on some. And in general, it's awful. I stand and wonder why you left. I mean, I had family there, but the zone enjoys taking away good things from you. Like my family. Plagues with them all away. Father, mother, granddad, five sisters, and two brothers. All of them older than me. All gone. It is un it's usually easy to lose one's life in Drop Zone, but that plague? That was pure evil. A plague. Yeah, a hardcore plague dominated half the zone several years ago. Not a lot of folks know about the plague, because no one really cares about what happens in the Drop Zone. But as zoners, we care. I care. My dearest are gone because of that pipe-working plague. How'd you manage to survive? Luck? Must be luck, because I don't have an explanation why death decided to spare me. I mean, I've never been ill my, in my whole life, ever. No colds, let alone something more serious. Oh, that's interesting. Maybe you were immune to the plague somehow. Have you ever been to a doctor? <laughs> a doctor? No, I'm a zoner, remember? Uh, you don't understand it. You come from a different world, you. It's all just luck. I agree with this guy. And, well, not all this luck, but it certainly seems to be sometimes. Everything in life is about having luck. That's what I've learned. You can be good at something, sure, but if you're unlucky, and that's that. Nothing helps. Look at my hands. I'm working like a slave my whole life, and everything that I've earned can easily be chucked down pipeworks. It's miserable. I was lucky enough to survive the plague, but unlucky with everything else. He shrugs, drifting off for a moment. After taking a deep breath, he continues. Anyway, enough of that. Got any more questions? No, I'm good. Goodbye, Detrius. Commoner, look like an iron head. Leave me alone. Everyone just wants to stand out here and not talk. If you're gonna be out here for a long time not talking. You might as well search your body and take your six digging coins. I'll take your GHP rounds too. Hello, Daphne. A petite young woman appears to be lost in thought. Oh, oh, I hit a button. Okay, I hit a button. Sorry about that, viewer. Uh, it's not like I have anything better to do. Ha! She pauses briefly. Look, I'm Daphne. Nice to meet you. Uh, it's Tim. Nice to meet you too, Daphne. Tim, got it. Okay, Tim, let's talk. Uh, so... What can you tell me about the Chortists? From what I know, the Institute of Chort is a research organization that celebrates a creature called Chort. Supposedly, the creature's genome is very unique and whatever they learn from it can be applied to us humans as well. I've heard terms like directed evolution and conquering the surface, but I won't comment on those until I know more. This is their main building. They supposedly have facilities in deep caverns as well. That's pretty much all I know. Ha! It's not my fault. It's just that the information on them is kind of scarce. Why are you here? And can you tell me about this place? Well, I got tired of living in a polluted environment. That's one reason. The other is, well, this into the chort seems to need a lot of experts in the field of biology, genetics, and similar. I'm not saying I'm an expert, but joining them could be the first step towards becoming one. Besides, I'm sure that they pay good money. Just look at the building. Hmm. Do you know why they even need so many scientists? I know what you really mean. Are these guys some evil cultists that perform twisted experiments to torture people? And if so, why would I want to join them? Well, frankly, I don't know what's going on inside. But I know one thing. There's no other place in the underworld where you can go and not ask yourself the same question, Tim. No, that's not true. Bandits aren't necessarily cultists. That's, that's a bit different. It looks like once you get inside that building, you're not getting out very easily. This whole world is twisted, and despite their strange appearance, these trolls just seem like... I mean, look, I'm careful. If I sense anything too strange is going on, I will back out. I haven't lost all my senses from living in Foundry. Got that one? What well, can you tell me about yourself, Daphne? I'm a geneticist from Foundry. Oh. What exactly do you mean by that? 
You see, Foundry is a station town, call it whatever you will, that revolves around a single thing, mining. Well, mining, processing, and manufacturing products out of ore that has been mined out, true, but the most important aspect is that such a place has no room for, say, a biologist. It's like a... like a... fish... fisherman on a train station. It's got nothing to do. Anyway, I had to get out of there. How'd you up here in the first place? My parents brought me here, there when I was little. The money was good, sure, but if we had gone to Southgate or Rail Crossing, we would have been golden. Uh, oh well. I ended up there. Years went by, I grew older. No more will I waste my time in that dump, I said to myself. I have aspirations, and I'm going to study as much as I can, get out of that hole, and move forward in life. Isn't it a bit dangerous to travel around alone? Technically, it's more dangerous to live in Foundry. <laughs> I'm not exaggerating, Tim. Nope. Hmm. Well, did you perhaps see any of the torches carrying a strange artifact? It looks like a 20-sided polyhedron. Uh, you described? No, I haven't seen. But I remember a large group of torches coming back from Core City. That's what I overheard. And they seem to have had something pretty valuable with them. Again, I sort of overheard them talk. What happened then? They went inside. What else? Anyway, that's all I can remember seeing. Thanks, Daphne. Morris? Some say there is life beyond the ceiling. I disagree, dude. I disagree. Five in motion on this guy. My feet are so gnarly, I successfully use them to make people vomit. Check it. <laughs> well, we'll check your pockets. Hopefully there's no vomit in it. There isn't. You do have some Sigean coins we'll take. You see this person nonchalantly watching other people in the courtyard. He's a self-satisfied smile on his face while eyeing everyone around him. He also seems to hold his chin steadily out of elevated as if posing for a sculptor to transfer it onto an elaborate bust. Interestingly, he seems astounded when you come near him and attempt to start a conversation. Your approach is met with a puzzled gawk, followed by him looking down at his body for some, to you, unknown reason. He then lifts his head up and speaks to you. You... You can see me. Whoa, are you invisible? Well, not to you, it seems. It, it's very strange. He ponders the situation for a moment. The only reasonable explanation for you to be able to see me must be that you also possess some special gift. Some special power, mortal. Yes, yes, that must be it. Divine one. It is an honor to be in your presence. He simply couldn't hide his smug smile. Ah, uh, yes, I like the sound of that. Divine one. Allow me to introduce myself. I'm Kale. The Lord of Invisibility. I'm the only one who has truly mastered the art of being in a state of gone. Completely invisible to the naked eye. Gone is the proper term for such a state, and it is I who came up with it. Divine One, that is indeed something I want to know more about. Well, yes, I can see how much divine powers can impress a mortal being, such as yourself, of course. Yes. Would you be so kind as to tell me your name? It's Tim. Tim, you say. A mortal name indeed. Well, let's talk about that gift of yours, shall we? Let's. Tell me of this gift of yours. When did you first realize that you were able to see invisible people? Uh, Kale, I, I was never able to see invisible people. You don't seem to understand the question. I. Uh, working with mortals is painful. Let's try, it, let's try it like this. I am invisible. You can see me. Therefore, since common mortals can't see me, but you can, you must have some special ability which allows you to do so. That is the only logical conclusion. And if you... He stops speaking. As his eyes shift away from you, he begins scratching his beard. Soon after, he points his finger at you and speaks. I understand now why you're so confused. Ha! You haven't had the opportunity to see an invisible person because there wasn't an invisible person to see. What? You cannot answer my question about first noticing you had the gift which allows you to see invisible people because you never had the opportunity to see an invisible person. I, Kale, the Lord of Visibility, am the first invisible person you were able to see, and that is why the existence of your gift seems to perplex you so much. That just makes perfect sense to me. It's a shame I can't actually go along with him some more and uh, play into the Divine One thing. Although, it'd be interesting if he actually is invisible. And, like, he can walk into, like, into the torch and walk out of it again if the door opens and no one does anything. That'd be a, that'd be a real mind-bender. 
For one, to know if he is capable of seeing invisible people, he must first see someone who is invisible so that his mind can confirm that he has seen someone invisible. But since he could never see anyone invisible because there wasn't anyone invisible to see, then one is unaware of his ability to see invisible people. So when he finally has an invisible person to see and sees it, he doesn't attribute that to the fact that he is able to see invisible people, but considers the invisible person to be visible to everyone. But that still doesn't answer how you're able to see me. Or the origin of your gift, mortal. Well, since you seem to have no freaking clue what I'm even talking about, I suppose you won't be of much help. So you better leave it at this. I'll just disregard you as an anomaly and stop concerning myself with it. I think it's best if we discuss something else. If we must. So tell me more about your invisibility in Gone. It might be too much for your mortal brain to handle, so I'll explain it to you in mortal terms. I was born special. When I was five, I noticed that when I focused really, really hard, I could become invisible. People walked past me like I wasn't there. Like it was completely gone. The older I got, the easier it became for me to enter the state of gone. Therefore, I entered it more often. Naturally. By now, you've pretty much perfected... I have pretty much perfected my craft. Well, you can see me. But you must possess something special which allows you to do so. You know, there there is the whole stealth thing in this game. As well. Where someone can just go invisible right in front of you. And see, I'm guessing it's something that is similar to the psionic inhibitors that all humans seem to possess in this world. That we have the ability to become cloaked, as it were. So, people can become invisible, if they so desire. And you know what? And he's not actually cloaked or stealthed. Is he? But maybe he has a different type of invisibility, if he is invisible, and not just making it up. What if people just ignored you? Impossible! It would mean that all those mortals had to know exactly when I was focusing really hard to enter the state of Gone, and then simultaneously decide to ignore me. That sounds... well, retarded. The only logical explanation is that I became truly invisible to them. Why'd you call it Gone? I like the way it sounded. Gone. Gone! Don't you hear the majesticness? No? Ah, never mind then. Why are you here and what do you know about this place? I'm here to show my power to the tortists. Unlike you mortals, I can go everywhere I like without being detected by mortal eyes. I am special. With that said, I believe these tortists, who seem to love praising powerful entities, should be presented with an invisible man. Me. As soon as I decide to reveal myself, they will most certainly praise me, and I will be granted entry into the glorious building. But why tortists? Couldn't you find someone else to praise you? Filth! I, Kale, the Lord of Invisibility, dislike everything Underreal has to offer. Everything but the Torch Institute, or whatever it's called. This building is worthy of being my residence. And so it shall be, once Torch to see the Invisible Man, me. A muscle of an abundance. I deserve only the best. Hope that answers your question, mortal. Did you perhaps see any of the torches carrying a strange artifact that looks like a 20-sided polyhedron? Hmm. I don't remember seeing what you described, no. To be honest, most of the time I don't concern myself with mortal affairs. It's beneath me. If you call everyone mortal, does that mean you're immortal? But of course, I'm special. Do you think this ability was bestowed upon me would fit a mortal man? Just wasted once I kale Lord of Vividity perishes? No, that's not how this thing works, mortal. And I don't expect you to understand. How can you be so sure? He rolls his eyes. You and your mortal questions. How are you so sure? I'm sure because what I possess should not be possessed by any mortal man. If that is not for mortal men, then I'm not mortal. You understand? But why exactly shouldn't a mortal man have the power to be invisible? Because mortal people are regular people, common. Common men cannot enter the state of Gone. I, Kale, the Lord of Invisibility, am special. Can enter the state of Gone, therefore I am not mortal. Simple logic. Mortal. Now stop bothering me with silly questions. <laughs> Alright, take care, Kale. Goodbye, mortal. I forgot how much fun the conversations are out here in the city of Chort. Some of them, at least. And he's been drinking the brew, I see. Maybe he can go invisible. Maybe he uh, is similar to uh, some special powers that, like, the dude possesses. Goodbye. Leave me alone. Get lost, lad. Oh, you have the same... Uh, Conversation options that uh, the other gentleman has. We'll pick your pocket, Mr. Psychic. Take some antidote. Take your cash. I can't reach the cash register unless I kill you. And I can't reach the fridge either. And I'm not going to kill you for those things. So what do we have over here? 
Oh. Oh, I'm so sorry. But I need the Zoas in your pockets. This is this is awkward. This is always awkward. You take care. Okay. It's so all the normal people outside into the chort. Let's talk with the chortists. Hello? Their names aren't in brown, so we're allowed to walk up next to them, probably without any trouble. We'll pick all their pockets and then we'll talk with the effort tour. I like the ones in Core City better. They had actual cash uh, or actual uh, things we could use to craft blueprints, energy cells, and stuff. All you guys have is have like 20 stitching coins, if that. But we're still taking them because we took pickpocket. And because I just spent $7,000 on the third floor of my home. This is more like it. We'll take a Sonic Saturist, but that's all we can take. And Denzel, what do you possess, sir? 40 coins. The man seems somewhat uneasy as you come near him. Even though you are unable to see his face, what you're able to notice is how his body language expresses his apprehension. He is unable to stand completely still. He either taps his foot or crosses or uncrosses his arms, or nervously looks all around him. When you near him, you notice a symbol on his uniform, a circular eye with two tentacles sprouting from it, similar to the symbol on the large doors behind him. Soon he speaks with a voice that sounds tense and hazy in one moment and cold in the other. What is it? Who are you? Are you one of the tortists? I'm Ephetor Denzo, and yes, I'm a tortist. In case you haven't noticed, you are standing at the entrance of the Institute of the Tort, and all these robe guards, Rassifors, are its members as well. We are here to preserve safety of the Institute, so be very careful of your actions during your time here. You got your answer. Now leave me alone. Can you tell me more about Chortism and an Institute of the Chort? No. I don't have the time for that. I'm busy. Not even for a few words? Come on, I'm not asking you to give me the full history of the organization. If you insist. The Institute of the Chort is an institution centered around Chort. A magnificent creature whose sole existence is a source of unimaginable knowledge and an inspiration for all of us Chortists. Ever since our founder, Aiden, first studied Chort's genome, he discovered the potential to improve mankind, to direct human evolution towards new heights. Chort is evolution. Evolution is Chort. One cannot go forward without the other. And now since you've got a brief summary, you're going to leave me alone. I have important work to do. I would like to become a member of your organization. I'm sorry, but we can't accept new members at this particular time. We are full, so to say. As you can see, if you were to look around you, all these people here are waiting to join the Institute. But alas, as I've already mentioned, we cannot accept new members. Still, that doesn't stop them from waiting, which is to be respected. For it might reward their weight, but not at this time, unfortunately. I don't think you understand me. I really want to become a chortist. What is the matter with you? Are your ears vestigial? It's like you can't hear me properly. We do not accept new members. Now buzz off. Buzz off! Is that your answer? I'm so disappointed. I've never even suspected that a representative of such a grand and enchanting organization such as the Church would say something so foul to me. I was willing to dedicate the rest of my life to days of Chortism, and to happily spend those very days surrounded by men and women, brothers and sisters, who are above all the low-life scum inhabiting the rest of Underrail. Magnificent Chort! You must be some inbred bastard who lost the ability to understand human language several generations ago. Look here. You don't want to be disturbing an effort or... I can order these Raphis Wars here to call you instantly, and they wouldn't even flinch. Or the main thing you want, but I'm standing my ground here. I want to join the Institute, and I'm willing to do anything to achieve that goal. Something tells you that despite him looking just angry on the outside, on the inside he's probably turning into a ball of plasma, reaching temperatures high enough to ignite nuclear fusion. Suddenly he cools down. His tone of voice becomes calmer, losing the red-hot edge. Anything, you say? Anything, you say. Interestingly, there is, well, an issue we could use some help with. Do tell. We have an issue with a missing figurine. 
a very important metal figurine. It was stolen from us, and we need to get it back. Now, we aren't precisely sure who did it, but we suspect those devolved lunatic inbreds to be behind the theft. They taint everything they touch with their filthy hands. The metal figurine depicts a man reaching for the surface. He points up. Up there. If you can find it, we might make a deal about you joining us. Brother. Where should I start looking for it? Well, our Rassifor scouts have learned some time ago that large groups of lunatics were seen in the vicinity of the Emporian Shopping Mall. That's west of here. If the lunatics are the ones who took the figurine, that would be the best start. What can you tell me about the lunatics? Calling material. No question about it. They are as mentally derailed as one can be and are therefore extremely unpredictable. Their motives, patterns of thoughts, or anything about them is impossible to figure out. They are powerful psionics, mind you. That's pretty much the only thing we're sure about them. Why would they want the figurine? Don't know. I don't think even they know. That is all under the assumption they are the ones who stole the figurine. What's the deal with this figurine anyway? Why is it so important? I'm not at the liberty to reveal that information to you. If you do manage to retrieve it, then you'll find out more. Alright, I'm on the job. I'll find that figurine and bring it here as soon as possible. Do not speak to me unless you have the figurine. Trick a bah! <laughs> Fun to annoy these, everyone here. Alright, viewer. Well. Oh, why did I have the cave hopper steak? I'm, I'm, we've been playing for about an hour, I think. Is that right? I think so. Yep. Alright, so we're going to stop here. I think when we come back, we'll explore more un uh, upper under rail. And in the meantime, I will be selling more stuff to merchants. So I will see you guys in the next one where we will clear more upper under rail and probably start and or finish the Lunatic Mall. So I'll see you guys then. Thank you guys for watching. And take care, everyone.